हेलो एवरीवन सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड टू मैक्सवेल रिलेशन हियर वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द मेल्टिंग पॉइंट टेम्परेचर ऑफ द सब्सटेंस एट दिस प्रेशर ओके सो रिमेंबर दिस पॉइंट दिस देयर इज दिस इज द कर्बन पीटी डायग्राम सो हियर this is the system so here uh, generally questions were asked from liquid to vapor phase but this time they have asked from solid to liquid phase so the formula will be same only so using maxwell relation how to know maxwell relation tpsv this and this so so always remember if you are traveling in this direction okay horizontal direction there will be no uh, uh, no negative okay if i try to write maxwell relation using this how should it be del v by del s at constant pressure del v by del s at constant pressure will be equal to similarly tps del t by del c at constant entropy now if i go the other way like this and like this then del t by sorry del p by del t at constant volume is equal to del s by del v at constant temperature so this is the main formula we have to use so if i go this way vertical sorry this way okay so i will use negative sign del p by del s at constant volume is equal to minus sign of del t by del v at constant and top this is the formula so this is how you should remember maxwell equation so uh, this is the main formula from which clausius clapeyron equation is derived okay this is only formula you, you just uh, have to remember including p t then v s v and t okay now what happens during phase change that pressure is a function of temperature only okay so if i write further right so that will make del p by del t at constant volume as d p by d t because it is not the function of volume anymore it uh, like phase change during phase change pressure is a function of temperature only and similarly we can uh, write del s by del v at constant temperature as ds by dv okay now see so our this equation can will become dp by dt is equal to ds by dv so ds is what will i uh, uh, write ds ds is equal to del q by t so during phase change what is happening if i give you an analogy from here so uh, del q is equal to basically equal to the latent heat energy and latent heat energy is given there so we we can directly write ds as latent heat divided by that temperature into 1 by dv okay now see uh, if i use further solve this equation what it will become so dp is equal to lh by dv dt by t okay now just integrate between these two points 1 to 2 what will get u2 minus p1 is equal to latent heat divided by it is going from solid to liquid So liquid minus solid will be there. Okay, into ln of t to that even. Right. So here, firstly the pressure was one bar. After one zero one bar. So after one zero one bar. So double zero minus one bar double zero to make it into kilo pascal. Right. Three hundred latent energy. For melting 300 kilojoule per kg, density is given. So, Ds is 
1 by 900 and BL is 1 by 1000 so 300 divided by 1 by 1000 minus 1 by 900 into ln of P2 by initial that temperature will be constant right here see 273 Kelvin so first temperature will be there so P2 we can calculate 270.99 Kelvin which is nearly equal to 272 okay this question uh, includes involves the regeneration in Brayton cycle so uh, we have been given the enthalpy at inlet to turbine exit of turbine and exit to compression so uh, so I will give brief idea about how regeneration regeneration is used so what uh, sorry this here is standard cycle so okay now see our compressor is here here we have heat transfer heat addition this is turbine here this is heat reaction okay so what uh, what is the idea of regeneration idea of regeneration is we are uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, compressing like uh, after the compressor it is uh, our air and exits at point 2 okay so we are adding heat from 2 to 3 if we want to uh, reduce the heat addition then that will increase the efficiency okay network done without where Q supplied right so if the Q supply decreases then efficiency increases so we install some uh, regener regenerator which will uh, like this this much of heat we are rejecting from 4 to 1 if we utilize this high temperature heat here to here that will uh, increase and decrease the amount of heat supplied okay and increase the efficiency so our aim is to uh, supply this high temperature rejection heat to heat up the air at the exit of compressor okay so we install a regenerator so this is our uh, main concept that here from 4 to 4 days let's say 4 days our uh, high temperature heat only high temperature heat not the total heat because anyway some uh, heat we should be rejected okay so uh, here from 4 to 4 days high temperature heat will come and here we have installed a regenerator so from 2 to 2 days it will like here it will uh, uh, the temperature of this uh, air coming from the compressor will increase okay so we define something called effectiveness of regenerator effectiveness of regenerator is maximum it uh, maximum amount of heat it can gain so maximum amount of heat is 4 minus 2 see so this is the uh, initial uh, air coming out from compressor it has lowest temperature out of all these uh, temperatures all these of all these states of air okay and what actual heat transfer how much heat transfer actually it is happening to dash to 2 so it is very uh, uh, similar to uh, effectiveness of heat exchanger that we use in heat transfer so it is defined as actual heat gain how much heat gain is happening actually 2 dash to 2 but maximum ideal heat gain that can be maximum up to 4 to 2 ok ideal heat gain ok so this is the concept now let's see uh, enthalpy at inlet to turbine this is 
we have given S3 is 1400. Okay. And enthalpy at exit of turbine 880. At the exit of compressor, H2 is how much? 600 kilo joule per kc. Now, and we have to find uh, absolute value of percentage change in heat addition. So, initially, heat addition is from 3 to 2. Heat addition at stage 1 from S3 minus S2, it will be 1400 minus S2 is uh, 600. 800 kilo joule per kg right now heat addition 2 will be 2 dash to 2 but for 2 dash we have to find s2 dash firstly so effectiveness formula is given and effectiveness is given as 0.8 so we'll use this formula 0.8 is equal to s2 dash minus s2 s2 is 600 divided by h4 h4 is 880 minus 600 so from here we will get S2 dash is 8.24 kilo joule per kg. Right. Now heat addition 2 will be 8.24. Sorry. Uh, S3 minus S2. Sorry. Heat addition 2 will be S3 minus S2 dash. Initially it was it was S3 minus S2. Here it is S3 minus S2 dash point is upward so uh, this is 1400 minus 824 so it is 576 kilo joule per kg see after using regenerator firstly heat addition is 800 now heat generation uh, heat addition uh, uh, firstly heat addition was around 800 large heat uh, addition requirement but using uh, after using regenerator heat addition is decreased okay so they are asking us to find out percentage change in heat addition so percentage changes so initially this much and so with respect to initial heat addition they are asking so it will be this so this will be 800 minus 576 divided by 800 into 100 this in percentage this is 28 percentage okay so uh, this question is based on the compressible flow so this is very easy question from the compressible flow only thing that you have to use here is the formula of mag number okay so here we have two things This is like we have converging diverging nozzle. Here we have some area. Here the two area. Okay, this is inlet. This is outlet. Okay. Now see. Here uh, other conditions are given as mass flow rate is given to 5.5. This one will be equal to m2 okay mass flow rate will be same and temperature is 350 kelvin pressure is 350 kilo pascal c1 is 3 meter per second and okay nice now the second uh, it outlet what we have outlet we have pressure of uh, temperature of 305 kelvin pressure of 101.5 kilo pascal and map number is 9 by 7. I will write it as M2. Okay. Now, since air is the ideal gas, we can directly calculate the area at inlet. How? Area we will calculate as C. PV equal to MRT. So, here in rate form, we can write it like this. Okay. So, once we see m dot we know r no r we know temperature no we know pressure no but volume flow rate is not known if we know the volume flow rate we we can use this relation area into velocity 
okay so we can calculate the uh, we will calculate the volume flow rate at first okay mr t1 by p1 so 2.5 into 1287 for ideal gas 350 by p1 p1 is 350 okay so it is 0.7175 meter cube per second and using area into velocity relation we will get the area as volume at 1 divided by c1 and velocity we have been given as 3 meter per second so we will get 0.2392 meter square okay now this is it inlet now it exit exit we will write the same m dot r t2 divided by p2 so we will know this 2.5 at 2873.05 divided by t2 pressure is 101.5 2.15603 meter cube per second okay so we know the volume flow rate at second but we don't know the velocity at 2 so how will solve so here comes the mach number so mach number is basically t2 by t2 bar okay and where c2 bar is speed of sound velocity of sound at exit okay so for this we have this relation gamma rt where we have to put r in joule per kg otherwise what will get is not in meter meter uh, like this should become meter square per second only then we will get the velocity in meter per second that's why you have to put this in joule per kg kelvin right so from here you will get c2 as m2 under root of gamma r t2 okay so now c2 is equal to what is m2 9 by 7 and ideal gas 1.4 into r is 287 into 305 This will become C2 is equal to 450.09 meter per second. Okay, so here A2 will be V2 R by C2, right? 2.15603 divided by 450.09. So this will equal to 0.004788 meter square. Now, therefore, we can Calculate the ratio of inlet area to exit area. Okay, to satisfy this condition, a one by a two. So this will be equal to. I know I I have calculated it. So this will be equal to fifty point zero four one. Okay, so one decimal place will be round. So this will be equal to zero. This question is related to non-ideal gas fluid substance. Okay, Maxwell equation. So uh, we have been given some expression of <coughs> non-ideal gas equation of state. So here pressure P is pressure, V is specific volume, R is a specific gas constant, T is temperature, and V is a temperature dependent parameter. This is very important. Temperature is there as well as V is a function of temperature. Okay, like this V is a function of temperature. Now, you have to just remember the if you know the formula, you can easily solve this question. So, for non-ideal gas, like for any gas, you can the expression of enthalpy is given by this this expression V minus T for real gases. Okay, DP. So we have been asked the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to pressure at constant temperature. If the temperature is constant, so this will be zero. Okay. Now, see, we have been asked del H by del del P. Okay, so del H. So here, del H by del P will become. V minus T into del V by del T at constant pressure. Okay, so 
we know v how we know v here we can write v as 1 plus vp into rt by v rt by p okay so v will be equal to rt by p plus rt b so v is this let's try to calculate this term separately okay del b by del t with constant pressure so hmm pressure is constant here so c del by del t of this term r t p plus r t b so r is constant i will anyway put it out of the equation t by p plus uh, t b right now see first term in uh, differentiation of first term will give 1 by p plus differentiation of second here we have to very very careful t b so t is some term temperature dependent and b is some other term which is function of temperature so we will use the product rule so firstly differentiation of t b constant then t constant differentiation of b r by p b r plus r t del v by del t now see uh, put this value del v by del t here what will get del h by del p at t v v uh, v v minus t into this term okay r by p plus p r plus r t del v by del t now see v is equal to where we have calculate r t by p plus r t v r t by p plus r t v minus r t by p my minus r t v minus r t square del v by del t square del t sorry so r t v r t v so del h by del t del t the constant temperature will be equal to minus r t square del v by del t this is the solution thank you